Hi, this is Keith Smith, and this is a Hyperledger Fabric CA V110 preview update on the Fabric CA sample. You can see the URL that I'll be walking through on your screen. The Fabric CA sample is very similar to the Build Your First Network sample. It's the big difference is that it uses, instead of using CryptoGen, it uses Fabric CA to generate all of this crypto material. This is important because the CryptoGen tool is not intended for production in environments, but because it generates all of the certificates, all of the private keys in one location, and then copies them to the appropriate place that uh, host or container. So, uh, so this sample demonstrates how to uh, use Fabric CA in such a way that all of the private keys never leave the container or host in which they are to be used and generated. It also, this sample also demonstrates how to use the attribute-based access control, but I've already talked about that in another recording, so you can see that recording uh, for information on that. So how do you run this sample? You uh, what I've already done uh, on my system is, number one, uh, until the images are published, you'll have to, uh, to build them locally. And you can do that by downloading the master branch from the Fabric, Fabric CA, and then, of course, having fa this Fabric samples repository locally. So assuming that uh, what I've done on my system is I've run this script called uh, build images and it has built my images locally with uh, and they're all tagged with latest. So it allows me to 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 run the sample as specified number two. To run it, you simply run the start script, which is uh, which is in your fabric samples fabric CA directory. Uh, to stop uh, after you finished running it the multiple times, you can you can run the uh, the stop script in the same directory. So let me go ahead and uh, start uh, a running of that. You can see here I'm in the Fabric CA Fab Fabric Samples Fabric CA directory, and you can see my the files that are here, the README that we've been going through, the build images script that I talked about. Uh, make Docker is used to, actually, to dynamically build the Docker Compose file. Uh, there are scripts that I'll step through in a moment, uh, unless the start and stop scripts that I just mentioned. So I'll uh, start these and then we'll go back to the documentation while this runs and we'll Okay, so understanding this sample, uh, I've already mentioned the start script that builds the Docker Compose file uh, using the make Docker script. It, uh, all of the containers that are mentioned in the Docker Compose, they, they mount a volume called the data directory and that is used to share information. And now normally this data directory in a real environment would not be needed, but in order to synchronize uh, events between containers, it's needed, as well as I use it to write the, the log files for all containers to it. It just makes uh, debugging easier. Uh, the set of containers, that uh, the, the sequence of containers, as you look at the Docker Compose file, you'll see the sequence. Well, well let me just step through it here. Uh, the first set of containers. Uh, well, there are three uh, root CA containers. There's one of these for each organization. And in this sample, just like the Build Your First Network sample, I have three orgs. One, uh, they're called org zero, org one, and org two. Org zero is the orderer org. So uh, so we, we start up a Fabric CA server for in each of the root CA containers. Next, uh, there's, uh, there are three corresponding ICA or intermediate CA containers. And of course, they must start up after the root CA containers because they have to enroll with 
with them. And next, the setup container will run. The setup container's job is to create the build the blockchain artifacts like the Genesis block and other things. It also has to register the identities for the orderer and the peer so that they can run, uh, so that they can enroll dynamically enroll themselves as they start up, which is what happens in this sample. And and that's different from the the sample, the build your first network sample. So uh, next, after all of the artifacts are built and the identities are registered, uh, the order and the peer containers are started. And again, they're writing all of their logs to the data log structure. And lastly, the run container starts. So this is the container that actually runs all the test cases to uh, do as it says here. Creates the channel, uh, the peers join the channel, chain code is installed and instantiated, chain code is queried and invoked, etc. Very much, this is identical to you build your first network sample. Uh, and all of this is, uh, as I'll go through in a moment, uh, in the main function of the run fabric script. Okay, so let's go back to our running. We can see that. Congratulations, the test ran successfully. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, all of the logs are written to the uh, volume mount uh, data logs. You can also see them in your container as well, but they're uh, duplicate copy in the data log directory. Uh, let's go scroll up just to see. Uh, the start script, as I mentioned, it starts off by clean, doing some cleanup by removing some existing containers and and Docker images, and then it dynamically uh, creates your Docker Compose file for you, and then it does your Docker Compose up to start your containers. You can see the root CA containers and the intermediate CA containers, one for each org starting. You can see a, a single setup container starting, which builds your Genesis block and other artifacts. You can see the order and peer containers uh, starting that uh, depend upon the setup having completed. And, and then lastly, you can see the, uh, the actual test starting, the, the run container starting the test, which uh, talks to the orders and peers. OK, so um, as it says here, let's just go down into uh, data logs. You can see. There are log files, as I mentioned, for the root CA containers, like uh, the, the one for the orderer, which is org zero, the ordering uh, organization. There are intermediate CAs. Here's the one again for the order. Uh, and then there's the setup container, which has the logs here. And notice also that we do create the file called setup successful which is the sentinel or flag to let the uh, peer and orderers know that setup is complete and they can start. Uh, and then you can see the peer, the orderer logs and the peer, the peer logs here for each org. And there are, as in the build your first network, you can see there's a, there are two peers, uh, peer one for org one, peer two for org two, etc. So there are all your log files. Now let me go back <clears throat> to the, uh, we're back at the top level here. I want to go down into scripts. And we'll see here that <clears throat> there's a, uh, the environment script is just a script that's shared by all of the other scripts to have some common uh, functions in them. But you can see that there's the, the start root CA. Let's look at that one. It's, it's a very simple one. Simply uh, initializes the, the root CA <clears throat> with a bootstrap user and then copies the uh, that root certificate to a target cert file which by the way this exists on the uh, in the data directory so that it can be shared between containers. You know Clearly, in a, in a real environment, you're getting your root CA certificate out of band. And so 
this type of coordination between containers is, is not needed in a real environment. And then lastly, we simply start the server. So next is the start intermediate. Um, and this, as you can see, we, we wait for the, uh, for the root certificate file to be created. So that means the root CA has already started and copied it over. And next, uh, the intermediate CA initializes itself, uh, creating its, uh, its root CA, uh, or sorry, its intermediate CA signing certificate uh, by effectively, uh, because of this dash U that identifies it as the intermediate, and it effectively is enrolling with the, with the root CA to generate its signing CA. So anyway, then it copies this, uh, this C generated CA chain to the target uh, chain file again on the in the data directory so that it can be shared by other containers and then it starts the intermediate CA. Okay, next in line is the, is the, uh, sorry, the run, no, not the run, the, uh, yeah, the setup fabric script. And this is going to generate the all of the artifacts. Uh, well, actually, first it registers and uh, order and peer identities, as you see here in the main function. We register identities. Then we get uh, the CA certs by calling uh, the fabric using the fabric CA client. Uh, get CA certs. We uh, dynamically build our config TX YAML based on some config parameters and then we we generate the channel artifacts. Um, the, let's look at the generate the channel artifacts. Uh, as you can see that we uh, this is the same as as was done uh, in the previous in the build your first network using config TX gen etc. And we simply loop through building uh, other artifacts based on uh, configuration parameters. So that's the setup. Next is the starting of the peer and the orderers, which starting an, a peer and an order are almost identical from a Fabric CA perspective, from an enrollment perspective. You'll see that we we're we call a wait setup that basically that waits for all of the the setup container uh, stuff to happen to complete. <clears throat> and next we uh, we enroll our our client. We call a Fabric CA client enroll to to get the ECERT for our order in this case. And we're going to do we do exactly the same thing for the peer as well. Notice here that I'm using, um, in this case, I'm actually enrolling to get the TLS cert. I'm calling, I'm going to call Fabric CA client enroll twice. One with uh, the enrollment profile TLS, and then once without it down here. So this first enroll is again to get the uh, TLS certificate, and this is to get the uh, ECERT or enrollment certificate. <clears throat> to get the TLS certificate, I notice I have to pass additional arguments which identify the host so that it puts the, uh, the host name in the certificate. And I have to, and I then I, I write this to a temporary directory called temp TLS, and then I, um, I, I copy the certificates out of the MSP structure into a non MSP structure. Now in the future, we may have uh, an, a TLS uh, certificates using an MSP structure in, uh, as well, but uh, that's to be seen, to be determined. Next, we just uh, we do our normal enrollment, um, and then we do some finish uh, the MSP setup, which you can look at, the, at what that does. Uh, the copy admin certs. What this does is notice that the the Fabric CA client enroll does not uh, 
create the MSP admin search directory for you. That has to be done by copying the admin, uh, by doing something similar to copying the admin search, because the admin cert is the, the public certificate of the admin identity, which gets enrolled separately in a separate container. And that, that actually happened in the setup container phase. Okay, so that, it, and then lastly, we start the order now that we have our enrollment, our TLS certificates and enrollment certificates for the order. The peer is, uh, is almost identical, so I'll just show you very quickly that um, we do the same exact same thing TLS certificates and then the enrollment certificates here. Um, and then lastly, we, uh, we have our, our sorry, our run fabric script. And this actually runs all the test cases that we do. Uh, I will note that all of this is, uh, is identical to the fabric, uh, to, to the normal Build Your First Network sample, uh, except we will be adding fabric CA specific things into this sample, such as um, testing of of the CA uh, of the attribute based access control as well as CRL processing, etc., into this sample. Okay, that concludes my uh, demo for the fabric samples. Thank you.